Live from the Washington, D.C. area, all empowered citizens need to know about intelligent use of resources, smart governance, inclusive communities, smart industry, and healthy, thriving urbanization. This is Smart Sustainability, the TV talk about shaping a sustainable future in the digital age with Nicolette Stividar. The earth underneath us is dying. Healthy soil is closely linked to a sustainable planet, sustainable food production, nutritious food that we need for our body to function optimally. Yet, 52%, that's over half of agricultural soil, is already degraded. Bringing us a myriad of problems going forward to the extent that in 60 years, we may actually run out of cultivable soil the way we're going. Save the soil, how to help soil regenerate organically, our topic tonight. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Nicolette Dividar. We hear many things about climate change and the planet, most of it being politicized, or at least in a politicized context. As a consequence, half of the population tunes out when we really need to focus on what are realistic and feasible approaches to real problems we're all facing. And for that, we need to ditch politics for a moment. So tonight, I invite you to do exactly that. What we generally forget in all the climate talks amid windmills and solar power and whatever the next suggested fad is, and what we haven't talked enough about, is soil health. The very foundation of a healthy planet, healthy food, healthy vitamins in foods, and a healthy ecosystem. A lack of organic, and the emphasis is on organic content, turns soil into sand, leading to food crisis, water scarcity, loss of biodiversity, loss of livelihood for millions of people, conflict and migration. As an example, a study on nutrients in food concluded that today you would have to eat eight oranges to get the same amount of vitamin A as your grandparents did with just one. Because soil depletion, according to Scientific American, has caused massive drops in nutrient levels in food. The average mineral content of calcium, magnesium, and iron in cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes, or spinach has dropped between 1914 and 2018 in the United States by a whopping 80 to 90 percent. Of course, there are other factors to consider as to why that's the case. But fact is, this is not something that can be solved with chemicals, artificial substances, and more engineered or genetically modified crap. We have enough of that already as it is. We need to put organic material back into the soil. Organic is natural. We need about 3 to 6 percent, apparently, organic content to enrich the soil. So how can we do that? Well, some argue, for example, by bringing the land under shade from vegetation and applying other organic materials as, for example, plant litter and animal waste. But a living soil, people, is vital to life on planet Earth. Now, I feel that with the current approach on sustainability that we see many governments and politicized movements emphasize, we're a bit climbing up the wrong tree in a literal sense instead of focusing on the very foundation, the soil. So what can we do to help soil? Our very foundation for growing food is what we explore tonight. Joining me is James Boyd Fuller. He's author of Out of Balance, a book about the errors of man-made systems, and his new book, Deep Calls to the Deep, which looks at history that's important to know for our current life on the planet. He's a specialist on soil and clean waters and puts all his passion into it, as you're about to find out. We also have Dr. Ali Kalvati, who spent his career on environmentally sustainable land use and remediation of contaminated soils in enviroagronomic practices and land resource management. He's an expert on soils information, soil microbiology, wildlife botany, and current agricultural land use, management practices, and their relationship to environmental issues. Dr. Calvati is a graduate of the Technical University of Munich and gained his postdoctoral experience at the German Research Center for Environmental Health. Welcome, both of you, on Smart Sustainability. Great to have you on. Hi, thank you, Nicolette. 
And just for our viewers to know, actually, so James, are you you look back, are you on a ship again? Yes. <laughs> Where exactly are you docked? Uh, Port Fushan. Ah. Louisiana. In Louisiana, all right. And yes. I think Dr. Calvati is also on the field going yeah. off and literally looking at soil. Where are you, Dr. Yeah. Calvati? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, yes, I, I am on my way to north of uh, uh, Ontario, where the thousands of uh, contaminated soil, contaminated uh, uh, mines are are existing uh, just going to take a sam soil sample for some neighborhood farmers to see whether how they deal with these contaminated soils which comes from the abandoned mines you know contaminated mines yeah i wanted to start off right away actually with some soil health facts so we we heard about 52 percent at least in the statistics i looked up that they're depleted What's the role of soil for climate, for nutrition, and to bind CO2, for example? Can you give us a nutshell, Dr. Calvati? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, 50% of uh, carbon is uh, resort in the soil. So we have a huge amount of uh, so carbon source in our soil, in, in our planet. So. Beside this, plant microbe interaction and plants plants interaction makes our soil very interesting and very uh, mother resource for many elements mm -hmm. and nutrition and uh, 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 nourishment for for plants. So healthy. If I understood your question. Um, uh, in, in a good, uh, I mean, uh, better in, in, and correctly. So it's the healthy soil is the soil with huge of uh, beneficial microorganism, mm -hmm. enough nutrition, uh, especially macro elements and micro elements, not much and not not low. And besides, is good carbon and organic material in the soil. This is a healthy soil, what we we call it, which is very good for. Uh, agriculture, planting, and etc. <laughs> so, when we talk about um, the soil is depleted, why actually is the soil depleted? Is there a major culprit, or what are the the two main reasons? So, um, actually, uh, um, uh, soil depleting is normally happening in whole world, in whole. Uh, 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 I mean, as a natural as a nature process in the world, it's happened. But because of huge amount of contamination, which mm -hmm. comes from chemical stuff that we use it every day, actually every day for our waste, for comes from our um, routine lives, like, uh, uh, I mean, whatever we do in the waste or agriculture, modern agriculture or industry or, so, or he uh, also uh, contaminated or, uh, air, it's already uh, bringing lots of contamination, contamination, which is a huge amount of um, uh, uh, um, heavy metals uh, mm -hmm. and also chemical stuff to the soil, uh, which is depleted and bring the soil, um, um, make soil sick. So that's why we, we call it um, the soil getting uh, contamination. Yeah. So, yes. So it's, I just want to tell you, it's, you know, the soil is process as a natural process is happen every thousand years. But uh, nowadays, because of last hundred years after industry revolution, so this, this, the contamination getting very fast and fast and fast. And then soil ca is not really able to recover itself. Uh, hmm. So that's why it's getting more sick and sick and makes uh, uh, not unarable, not possible for, for planting or growing some, 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 some plants. Yeah, so it. apart from the fact that we, we know we have sort of also the overuse of land, for example, the overuse of agriculture to feed all those 7 billion people that we have right now. Is there, apart from that fact, because you mentioned it's also a natural, a natural component to it, but can, is it fair to say as a natural component that, for example, because we have 
so many people. So leaving aside the, the growing, the agriculture part, but that we just from, from the, the sheer size of population, that also accelerates the natural uh, depletion of soil or not? No, you know what? Uh, to be honest with you, for soil, I mean, the whole soil around the world can produce three or four times per, uh, food for whole uh, population in, in the world. But as we are because, today, so the size yes. of population as we are today. Yes, you know, if okay. I mean, we can produce per, uh, 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 food for almost 20, 30 billion people in the world. But the problem is uh, the modern agriculture want to produce, uh, I mean, uh, yield very fast mm -hmm. and huge. That is our problem too in, in modern agriculture. Uh, and using a huge amount of pesticide, herbicide, mm -hmm. uh, and also fertilizer mm -hmm. makes the uh, um, soil yield. But on the other hand, you, you can see the, uh, the food, our quality of food, our uh, fruits, or anything that comes from the soil is getting low and low and low. So mm -hmm. this is, I mean, what we call mishandling of the soil, what we have it around the world. So mm -hmm. it's not that we, our, our population is getting shrinking, that's, we, that's why we have to produce lots of food. No, it's, it's wrong. But misleading of the soil, getting much money of this, uh, from, uh, from our production it makes uh, the, this, this problem to the soil. Hmm. Understood. So, so, James, let me ask you, do you have something, do you see this the same way or do you have something to add on this one? Why, who would you consider is the culprit of the soil depletion? Any in addition to what Dr. Kavati just said? Yes, well, the details of depletion and nutrients are the salting aspects of fertilizers, uh, artificial fertilizers. Uh, the salting aspect kills the microbial in the living soil. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, uh, it does not recover. You, you'd have to, you have to put life back into it to, to put it back into a conditioned state. Mm -hmm. If you continue to use the salting of the artificial fertilizer, it continues to deplete that soil. We become a desert maker. Mm -hmm. uh, this is exactly what we are doing today. We're our desert makers. Uh, Ali has corrected this and uh, mm -hmm. he's putting life back into the soils. This is a big, big understanding which also allows for the nutrients in the soil to be used and they don't leach out. Yeah. They don't leach out like artificial fertilizer. Yeah. They are also saving hypoxia in coastal areas around the world. See. If you get algal blooms from nutrient loads going into waterways, then it dies, bacteria eats it, eats up all the oxygen. Anything living there dies with it. So he's solving uh, actually three problems here. Uh, food production, soil remediation, and hypoxia in coastal seas, okay. ocean waters. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's, a win, win, win. Um, it's brilliant. Okay, and wait, 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 wait. Before, before we needed. get to before we get to the suggested solution, I want to break this down a little bit because it is a complicated aspect for most of us who have normally nothing to do with the soil. Because we hear all the time, you know, most of it is like what we hear mostly is climate change and energy and stuff like this. But soil actually is not talked about enough to actually even tackle that. So let's talk for a moment about what are actually critical components for healthy soil. Who okay. wants to take it? Should I answer or? Yeah, go ahead, Ali. Yes. Go ahead, yes. Dr. Kalvati. Good. Okay. You know, a soil is like a human being. He needs something to, to live, to do, to develop, to promote something like that. This is something that we always, we handle soil like a dirt, unfortunately. For many years, thousand years, I think not thousand, hundred years, last hundred years, we just wanted to get something from the soil, but nothing get give back to the soil. This is something that we always ignore. We always ignore the soil. We always ignore the soil scientists and many things that we related to soil, plants, anything like that. You know, whatever we need from the soil, whatever we desire from the soil, we should return back at least a bit to this. So the problem is. Uh, 
the whole if you hear some okay the, it, there is the uh, sahara in the africa and it's not arable so i i give i give a question so do you think that we cannot grow something in the sahara we can do that but we have to develop it you know everywhere in is every soil in the whole world except the polar which is very and uh, it's uh, it's um, uh, and i see it can be arable can be plantable but, but we if have we to really grow, give but, some effort to this but if you know? we could grow if we could grow something in the sahara for example why haven't we done it if we have the if we would have the the knowledge to do it because it, it we ignore it because we don't care about it we just we give okay we tell okay there is some huge two three billion hectares soil we have in 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 let's say in in a usa or in Africa, uh, in Africa, can we 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 just uh, put our effort to to grow the plants in this area? But we don't give. It is something you know. You have let's say giving a question. We, I have two uh, children. One is disabled. One is very good. I mean, um, very uh, smart. Mm -hmm. I give more. I give more effort to the smart children. You know, mm -hmm. child not others so this is something like that i can't guarantee if you really something comes and some people are some some government wants to 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 make uh, the sahara arable i can't guarantee that we can't do that yeah because i know i know for actually i do know for a fact that i think for example in morocco there is a lot of emphasis on on trying to turn some of the desert land into land into actual soil where you can actually grow stuff okay this is the problem you know what the problem is 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 that the um, actual agriculture is needs water yeah but the, our modern i mean my uh, project is always using less water to grow plants this is something okay. that is amazing this is a uh, magic so it's easy to give water mm -hmm. drink water to the to the some a farmer and then let uh, let them to to grow some plants but it's difficult mm -hmm. to give not water to the farmers and say okay grow up grow the top to potato tomato yeah. approach using and or uh, I mean, uh, uh, providing some some modern technology to use less water mm. to 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 grow up plants. So this is this is always uh, make m m misunderstood around the world that uh, we need huge plenty of water, billion uh, million metro uh, metro cubic water to to grow plants. But it's it's not correct. Mm. You know, it's some in Sahara. I mean, I mean, in Morocco, the, the annual uh, precipitation in 200 millimeter. But do you know how much is the evaporation? 4,000 millimeter is evaporation. Yeah. 10 times more, 20 times more. So it's the so your uh, focus irrigation. is to use less. I mean, your focus is on using less water than absolutely what we because the climate change that. forced us to use mm -hmm. uh, to change our minds about agriculture yeah uh, modern agriculture we have to change this yeah and i, I want to talk about this and now that we talk about um agriculture for example i want to talk a little bit about some of these these uh, stats and critical components and sort of go through them for example food nutrition etc so um we, we said already that we have for example the the loss of of nutrition in soil we know yes. that poor soil leads to poor nutritional value. That's a huge problem when you think about that today's vegetable contain, what, 90% fewer nutrients, which means we eat a whole lot of empty whatever. So <laughs> how do That's we water. get, uh, yeah, well, how do we get, how do we get in chemicals and plastic and all this other stuff? So how do we actually, the nutrients though, how would we get nutrients back into the soil? Okay, I tell you, it is like a growing uh, a little kid. How you give your kid, how you grow your kid, and then make them, uh, um, I mean, adult person, mm -hmm. make them a young person. How you give, you afford, you give effort, you give nutrition, you give food to this. This mm -hmm. is our, our, our soil is like that. You have to give back something to enable to, to make this, uh, this soil arable, to make mm -hmm. them productive. You know, mm -hmm. this is something you cannot, I mean, not you. I mean, the people cannot expect to do nothing for the soil, dirt it, 
bring whatever they want, plastic, and then they, they, they expect that the, the sea soil should be productive. They should yeah. uh, product huge amount of, you know, the yeah. effort of us. And then what, it, what we do, we bring a very easy thing, f uh, chemical fertilizer, very easy, very mm -hmm. cheap. Bring it to fertilizer to the soil, uh, chemical fertilizer, make it more dirty, make it more salty. And then at the end of the day, you ask, oh, what happened? You know, this fertilizer doesn't work. Of course, this doesn't work. Yeah. You have to think, that you never give your kid uh, something unhealthy, unhealthy food. You always yeah. try to give your, uh, your kid organic yeah. food, organic stuff, you know? This is like, soil is like that. You have to give your soil, you have to give respect to this soil. Yeah, know? but I think this, this, is is, some... this is also one thing that we're, most of us are not so much aware yet, that I believe that, you know, soil <laughs> is treated as a yes. thing, but, I don't not, expect. but not as a living organism. So I think that part, you know, the soil is a living thing, it's something living, it's a living organism. For that, I think for most people, that's already where, we, where most people do not connect with. So we have to, I suppose, get the knowledge back that soil is a living, a living um, organism and therefore we need to treat it with respect and, and very differently because it is... You know what? Hmm? You, know, I don't, I don't, I, you know what? Why we don't start education of soil from the school why yeah. we always start to give yeah. the people in the school something like uh, um, traffic yeah. uh, i mean traffic rules why we tell that giving yeah. respect to the neighbor why we give this education why we don't give these people i mean to our kids from the beginning of their education yeah. oh okay you're if you you know respect to your soil you know the uh, yeah. indians in north uh, uh, in north North uh, Ontario, where I used to live with them for one year, mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, Aboriginal people, they give, they give the, I mean, they give this kind of education uh, to, to their kids, respect to the air, respect to the soil, respect to the yeah. water. And that's why they make this connection. Why we don't give this a small, even one lecture about the soil. Yeah. Don't put your waste, don't put your stick or uh, I might be saying, the, your trash to the soil. Why we don't, why we don't do that? That's a good question. I think that's a very good question. James, I'm going to bring you on here on, on, on this one. Yes, so the next it's one. Good idea <laughs> well, let's, let's move on here to the next point here for a second. So we, hold, hold that thought. We're going to get back to the education point. I want to move on a little bit to water scarcity. How can you explain, James, to our viewers, for example, how depleted soil and water scarcity, if there is a connection, and if that is the case, what what is it? Where is it coming from? Well, climate change, uh, there's proponents to climate change that are causing a lot of problems. <laughs> um, the AMOC, uh, the Atlantic Meridial Oscillating Current is slowing down. There is so much inundation of fresh water from Greenland, mm -hmm. where the uh, current begins at. Uh, that it's slowing, it's uh, slowing down that process, that current goes all the way around the planet. Um, so it takes 100 years for its circulation, but now it's slowing down. So this is causing implications to uh, weather locally and regionally yeah. and worldwide. Yeah. So I, I want to talk how do also we fix that? Yeah. We need more uh, plant structure. We need more organics. We need to make the make uh, the Sahara green. I have a plan for that uh, to make the Sahara green. I wrote it in my first book, Out of Balance. And uh, yes. anybody wants to do it, it's not if we're going to do it. It's when we got to do it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because the way I think things are going. Th there's one other but, thing I think we need to inject on this one, and that's that. So, so organic matter obviously holds up to ninety percent of its weight in water and releases it sort of slowly. So, obviously, it would help with droughts as well. So, can we say that droughts today are a direct result of depleted soil, or one of the factors? Um, yes, I would agree with your statement. It is absolutely uh, soil when it's alive and very uh, conditioned and a lot of life in it. The microbial absorbs many thousands of tons, many millions of tons, actually, of CO2. Um, if you're not having this uptake and downtake, 
uh, you have imbalances. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening. I think Ali would agree with me on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You do? Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I may agree with you. Yeah. We, we also, so, yeah. Forests, uh, biological, I mean, even gardens, <laughs> we have to start growing things. We have to um, make up for what Brazil and the Congo and Asia have cut down. You're talking about yeah. the lungs of the planet. Uh, yeah. They've cut it down. I mean, then now they're having serious problems with drought. Huh. Yeah. They, Go figure, right? Yeah, so, they're huge problems. Um, they're huge problems yeah. with drought. And then, of course, when you look at um, the, 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 the soil depletion, then that also takes us right into biodiversity, for example. When we think about that, uh, supposedly 27,000 species of life forms are becoming extinct every year as a loss of habitat, we can't, I mean, we cannot afford that, but yet it's happening. Yes, we can really stop it. You know, um, this is something that uh, we have to really cope or really get uh, make uh, adapt with this climate change. So we cannot tell, OK, we have to do lots of effort, sucks and capture the, the carbon from the air and from the I mean, atmosphere to make our life uh, to, to the, the same as the 40, 50 years ago. We, we cannot do that. We, we have to cope with this. We have to tolerate. I mean, adapt with this uh, condition we change our uh, our our method uh, our method of uh, application of the irrigation our method of application of fertilizer making something you know the thing that always i i told to to these people who are w working in desert just just leave the leave agriculture leave any farming activity in the summer and do and start from winter because you have enough uh, so, uh, we have you have enough uh, so, sun, mm -hmm. and you have you a temperature is uh, is uh, uh, almost good for for agriculture. Why you, you you bother yourself, and then you want really to do agriculture as I think two uh, hundred years, two hundred years ago, just in summer when it is it doesn't really give you this chance when your plant is drying up and dying. Just change your date of agri uh, I mean date of farming, date of agriculture. You know, this is something that we, we, we can do. We can plan. We can really change the, our strategy of agriculture. But I tell, uh, but, I, but mm -hmm. again, I'm telling you, we have to really give life again to the soil. Okay, so, so since we brought this up here a little bit, I, I want to talk about one more aspect to make it clear to our viewers, and this is the connection of carbon stored in soil, climate change, and, and depletion of the soil. So that becomes clear, because I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. Can you mm -hmm. explain, so in terms of how those two are connected? Because I, I pull out a lot of stats on this one, but I think it would be really nice to, to really see how a, an, an undepleted soil, a revitalized soil, actually directly affects climate change. Can you talk to that? Okay, go ahead. I think you'd be better at that, Ali. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so depleting the soil, it means that you take lots of uh, um, heavy, uh, I mean, uh, nutrition, um, carbon, and uh, I mean, uh, um, I mean, um, organic material from the soil without bringing it back. Yeah. This is something every year when they do that, you your your un, uh, your arable soil, fertilable soil become more unarable and more desert. So something is, and then beside this, when you have a climate change, when your uh, climate getting warm and environment, you, your 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 soil getting losing more uh, uh, moisture, losing more. Uh, organic material so you cannot do anything with this but with fertilizer you do it should be really careful to what do you do what you add to the soil if you give a uh, chemical fertilizer to make your soil better you are wrong you do much more uh, i mean you harm soil much more in, in, uh, and you cannot get soil uh, back to to the normal structure because the chemical that you give it to the soil is not really adapted, is not really adjusted by uh, soil, soil uh, microorganisms, soil structure. So you do double harm to the soil. Mm. So beside this, 
Besides this, when uh, when the climate change is happening and we cannot do anything with to this, we have to really think about how we can smoothly help soil to yeah. to to grow to help to it, to it, leave again. Exactly. So, so uh, the, what we do is, I mean, changing the I mean, changing the our agriculture strategy, our, our agriculture technology, and also giving some some fertilizer, which is basically is source of the soil. We give the soil the fertilizer which is, comes from the soil. We don't give this, to the soil fertilizer which comes from the oil. So this is something different between us and a modern agriculture. So to sum it up, though, before we go to the solution, so I, I read a statement, and you can correct me if that's wrong or not, but it says that if so, if the world's soil are not revitalized, they could release 850 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. That's more than all of humanity's emission Absolutely. in the last 30 years combined. Would you agree with that? Yes. Absolutely. And that really should bring it back into focus in terms of why, rather than focusing on all these other things. Most people hear climate change, the first thing they think about is solar and windmills and all this stuff. But there's no, no one or very few people talk about soil. So let's yes. talk about what can we actually do what, to, to revitalize the soil. What is your approach, Dr. Kalvati? So our approach is first to 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 use, I mean, some fertilizer, which is really comes from the soil, which is, is a resource, which is the source of the soil. We do not give any harm things to kill. You know, our soil is the ocean of the, of the, of the living, living things, like, any, like a, a small animals, uh, fungi, bacteria, anything like that. We have to really help them, promote them to live and continue, continue their live to, to, uh, to, to help us to produce uh, uh, um, uh, food. So please do not give any harm, harm thing, any artificial thing to the soil to make, to, to think that if you give this soil, this kind of uh, chemical fertilizer, don't think that you can, you, you can uh, get more, uh, uh, more yield and faster yield. It is wrong. You kill the soil, and at the end of the day, you don't get anything. Yeah. James, what do you have to add to this one? Um, yeah, killing the soil is, is illogical. Um, what is good about Ali's uh, suggestion is to save the carbon in the soil. And carbon is food for the microbes. Uh, so if you keep that healthy and you keep that good, which he's done, he's got a waste product. He's using coal uh, ash mm -hmm. for the carbon. I mean, it's brilliant. Um, it's okay. it's an absolute win for the soil, yeah. and it's a good pathway to uh, blend with the soil, yeah. uh, not only putting the life in there, but giving it the substrate to live. Yeah. Uh, that That, in my opinion, is... Totally logic. So, Dr. Kalvati, yeah. how do we imagine that? So, you go there and you put the 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 the, the coal on the on the land. How do we how do we envision that in practical terms? You know what? Uh, soil normally has a per, some percent of the organic material. So yeah. sometimes it is not really enough for 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 plant. But uh, uh, some coal coal is the source of the carbon. But it is not really uh, easy to, for plant to absorb. So when we, we put this kind of uh, coal to the soil and then make some plants to live and microorganisms to live with this, if we try to, to break down, uh, degrade, I mean, break down this uh, carbon uh, for bone and then make it available for, for, for plants. So it is win, win, win. So you, you don't use ca uh, coal for, 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 to, to uh, emit carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And, and, and in opposite, you use this carbon to use for, for plant to grow and product for you. You know, this is the, our, our formula to, to, to bring, to increase uh, um, um, uh, 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 organic material to the yeah. soil, to, to help, uh, to help organic matter, uh, organic mat, uh, micro microorganism in the soil, to help promote plant growth mm -hmm. in the soil, and they make it plant microbe interaction, uh, uh, and increase plant microbe interaction efficiency 
to four or four percent. Now, when we talk about organic material, um, and that's actually for both of you, James and Dr. Kalvati, when we talk about organic material, yeah. does that include yes. uh, leaves? Does that include animal waste? Does that include what all goes in there? No, just just carb, just just coal, uh, waste coal. I mean, something comes from the oil, uh, from the coal mine, uh, which is lignite and something like that. They are did. And we add some, some microorganism, artificial microorganism, to in order to break down this big uh, molecule, uh, molecule of the carbon mm -hmm. and uh, to make it easy for plant to observe and, and, and use it. Mm -hmm. So then how long, do, how often do you do that? Every year, once per year. Once it's per not... year. And then is there a time, once you put it on, is there a time where you cannot use the land for a while? No, no, you just use it, with, you, just, you, just, you just add this uh, fertilizer to the plant. Okay. Let's say you put some corn, and then you add this uh, to, to this corn, you, this fertilizer, and then they use it. Yeah. Now, yeah, just like fertilizer. Yeah. Now, we talked a little bit about we need to change agriculture. I want to dive into that a little bit, because when we talk about we need to change agriculture, th there are obviously a myriad of problems, you know, sort of that go with that. So we have, we have millions of farmers that actually live off farming the entire year. So how would you say, first of all, what do we need to change? So you talked a little bit about not doing uh, agriculture all year long. But no, then, yeah. no, we, we call it integration agriculture or integration fertilizer. You know, we cannot tell to, far, uh, to, agri to a farmer that just stop your fertilizer, exactly. chemical fertilizer, they don't use. No, we are just, uh, we do it this as, a, we call it integration. Yeah. Let's say 10% of our organic fertilizer, 90% of your. And we try to give the education to the farmer to, to in the meantime, in the, in, when the time passes in five, six, maybe sometimes, less sometimes a short period of maybe sometime long period we try to give we, can, we try to turn the the land from 100 percent chemical fertilizer to to 100 percent organic fertilizer so what is the process and that was actually be my next question so when we look at for example sri lanka what happened there when they were asked to stop the pesticides and use and, and don't use chemical fertilizers we you know people had a huge uprising for example so obviously we can't kind of change this overnight so what is an actual process and what is a normal change process that is supportive of people's way of life as well as the soil in how you would move over from the chemical nonsense that we have to get Get to a hundred percent organic fertilizer. You have to. You to, I mean, the governments, all of governments, should give subsidize, subsidize to the to the farmers. You cannot tell to farmers, okay, this year, just do that, and without uh, you know guarantee. You know, gar yeah. farmers. You know, I'm coming from a farmer, a farmer's uh, a family. We, we we are trying to do our best to 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 produce our our, our uh, yield. But at the end of the day, when we don't see it, so we don't have money. So we cannot tell to the farmer, just do that, whatever I tell. You have to subsidize, right? you have to guarantee. You have, you have to work with the governments. Most of governments are crap. They really want to get money, they put it in their pocket. But the, some governments are really thinking about their, their, their people. They give some subsidy and they, give, uh, I mean, they help, they support the farmers, like in Germany, to, to, to change their habits from uh, or chemical fertilizer to organic fertilizer. You know, at the end of the day, we don't have other other choice. You know, we cannot do anything. We cannot go with this organic uh, uh, fertilizer to till end. We we kill all animals. We kill our plants. We kill our, all the living thing in the in the uh, in the whole planet. And really believe it. It's really happening. Hmm. Now, let me ask you one other thing, which I think really we need to talk about in this in this uh, connection, sort of speak. Where where do animals and animal waste fall into that? And I, I'm t I'm telling you why I'm bringing this up because I I know, for example, in Germany we have a top bureaucrat now that has decided that they want to do a fart tax, literally a fart tax for cows so that they would prevent uh, basically farmers they would restrict of course the cows that are there but then they would also basically charge a tax on the cows for their 
waste, so to speak, you know, um, sure. saying that this is a way to reduce CO2. But then on the other hand, though, we've heard that you need to actually, this actually also fertilizes the, the, the soil and it, it, to, to kind of say, well, you know, you need, you need fewer cow poop, so to speak, on the fields to bind the CO2 when in reality is that it actually fertilizes the earth and to bind more CO2, there's a discrepancy. Where do you fall in this? You know what, we are, we are I, my, personally I'm against to uh, uh, animal manure for agriculture mm -hmm. because it is whole, full of uh, antibiotic, full of hormones, anything like that. It's mm -hmm. also full of chemical stuff. So it's, it's not good for the soil. But our idea is when I uh, studied in the Germany, we always thinking that the manure of the animal is should be goes to the biogas, not should it shouldn't come to the soil. It should go to the bio produce biogas, uh, and then uh, you use uh, something really more safe for for the soil. Yeah, but I, hang on a second here. I'm going to challenge you on this one because if nature yeah. had intended that cow poop would go into biogas and not on the soil, we wouldn't have a cow pooping on the soil. But the way nature is structured is that animals actually drop it on the soil. So I think to kind of come in and say, you know, from a scientific point of view, that uh, it, it, a, a, a animal waste shouldn't go on the soil, that to me is completely against nature the way it's naturally structured. No, because yes, because it is. Nowadays, if nowadays God didn't want it that way, we wouldn't have it. No, no, no. You know, the, it is not eighty or six years ago. The cows, cows eat something natural uh, grass and are produced for your manure. Now, cows doesn't eat this. They give hormones, antibiotics, stuff like that. Okay, so I. Exactly. But, th but then we're coming to a different issue. Th so the issue is not the, the animal waste or the manure. It is what they've been fed and what we've kind of used to actually raise the animals where we were interfering negatively in the entire cycle. And that in return prompts us to needing to interfere more or wanting for some people to want to interfere more because we need to get that out. But wouldn't the healthier way just be actually starting then with the food and healthy healthy food and just taking all the the chemical crap out including the unnatural way of of holding animals if i might inject here just yeah. for a moment um ali has solved that also the uh herbicides and pesticides killing insects and all this mm -hmm. he's actually uh researched and done this uh experiment for a healthy plant mm -hmm. creates a hormone which will reject any insect attack it will create a its own biochemical which rejects that attack it's amazing so yeah. we would be also helping in that respect mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so, okay, coming back to the agriculture, Dr. Calvati, so there is the feeding part of the animals. We talked about that a little bit. We talked about um, finding a different way, putting more coal into as, as a more organic fertilizer, putting that in. Now, in terms of agriculture, are there some other ways? I mean, I know that sometimes, you know, countries also rotate certain, I don't know what the English word is, so you keep some areas not um not uh, in use for a while and use the others so Crop you rotate rotation. yes rotation what, what do you think of that rotation does we don't need rotation as long as you uh, you you uh, i mean you treat your soil in good way you, and you if you don't make your soil not tired because when mm -hmm. do you when you when you use your soil too much when you get too much th yield from the soil of course you rot rotate this but, but 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 if you treat your soil like treating your your kids, mm. you don't need uh, in many uh, cases uh, this rotation, you know. Mm. So let, let's uh, let's see. Do James, do you have something to add on this one? Because I want to see if there are some questions. I actually want to open the floor here. Do you have well, something as, to add? As far as what I see uh, for our futures as a humanity and a civilization. Um, it would be best that we would use this solution as quickly as possible. Um, 
like I'm, I'm doing grants and things. I'm, I'm going to do marketing in the United States and the Mississippi Valley, uh, spillways and all that, all the northern. Uh, it's going to be a great big project, but it's going to be a really great win for humanity uh, to use something that is putting life where life needs to be and taking the excess nutrients out of where it doesn't need to be. Mm. And this has been solved. It's, it's the biggest solving aspect to humanity in 100 years. So and how long... That, Go ahead. How long would it take for soil to get actually revitalized? Is there like a time estimate? Are there it's certain? Depend, it's depend to the soil. It's depend to your climate. So, for example, in U, uh, uh, Europe is different as Sahara. In East um, um, Asia is different as United States. But it's, in average, it really works with your soil. Five years, six years is enough to really make your soil happy and healthy. Five to six years? Yes. Very doable. And that can be done basically by everyone, right? So Absolutely. Yes. We, try to teach, we try to teach every farmer to do by it by himself or herself. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. So you teach we, them how to do this? How is it generally yes, we, been accepted? We don't, uh, we, it's not my habit to, uh, to make this uh, method exclusive just for myself. Mm -hmm. I try to to educate uh, every farmers around the world as can as as can as, as possible mm -hmm. to really give them this opportunity that they really don't put their money or waste their money to to for, uh, for chemical chemical fertilizer they use their own source they, they use their own own uh, um, i mean uh, uh, ability to to mm -hmm. to re recover your, their soil mm -hmm. That's, that's and then um, also the cost for those farmers. Ali is thinking in this area also. Yeah. He's got the price down for this organic method to about 800 a ton. The artificial is almost uh, 1,500 a ton, something yeah. right now. Yes, yeah, thousands. It's crazy. Thousands, thousands, thousands. How can the farmer possibly make it with that kind of an expense? So we've done this also to help the farmer. Yeah. So, but that, that, think about it. So then why are they doing this? Like with the expense, um, you know, to go on, what, what's, why, why? So. It's, uh, it is lack of information. That's lack of information. That's a, I, I don't tell anything else. That's and it, also lack of information? Fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, uh, for, um, uh, factory are huge marketing. They are mm. uh, they put billion dollars for marketing. You mm. know. So, what do you generally see as the major obstacles for farmers, for example, to go to an organic, uh, to to an organic fertilizer, for example, to this replenish the soil? Answer. <laughs> what? This is James. Uh, this this kind of James uh, answer to this because okay. he the financial. Okay, James. <laughs> so, what is the biggest okay. what is the um, biggest obstacle for farmers that you've encountered? The greatest <laughs> obstacle you, you've Absolutely. got to change over to from one entire process to another entire process. Yeah. Now we're trying to make it uh, easy for them to do this, but we've also got to be backed by the state, by the Fed, by you know, in this agricultural change. It has to be you know you know buffed up with yeah. the money to be able to help these farmers make that change. How else do we create the organic fertilizer? We, we can't just create it out of thin air. You know, we need the money to do that. And uh, if we become a, a failure, then, you know, I would hate to see that. But what is true is going to be evident in our process. And the truth comes out that our artificials are destroying soils and uh, yeah. waterways and everything else around it. So yeah. Yeah. we need to quickly make a decision as far as a forward progress as a civilization, as a humanity. Yeah. Uh, we need to make this decision today, not tomorrow. I just want to add some very, one, one uh, question. Yeah. Uh, one sentence to this uh, 
just uh, you know the most of the farmers around the world they they aware they are aware that uh, that uh, chemical fertilizer is harming their soil i i last time i was i visited uh, turkey one of them uh, i mean olive uh, farmers told me okay ali you know what uh, my, my 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 trees are dying because of this pesticide herbicide and also the fertilizer but i don't have any other choice to you know the uh, this market organic fertilizer market should get a little bit more uh, easy to approach for farmers hmm. but yeah but i think that that will be that's the major that is the major problem that's why i think probably some of the pressure will have to come from the from people from society you know because if we wait for industry to change they're not going to give up their profits no 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 every farmer every community every 10 villages should really work together to yeah. uh, to produce their own fertilizer we are we don't expect any this uh, big uh, big boys this big of um, i mean uh, uh, chemical fertilizer to really change their habit because they never change it how yeah. you can tell to shell uh, i mean oil company to change their their their, their habit and bring uh, to 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 produce a uh, solar f uh, panel never you cannot do that yeah. so you should really put lots of effort help the farmers one by one or also uh, me, me educate their community to really give them uh, this oppor opportunity opportunity to to produce their own organic fertilizer by own yeah, I like this approach. I really like this approach mm -hmm. because having your own fertilizer for local communities, particularly to produce their own fertilizers, that would be the way to go. Now, let's see. Do we have any question? I know we have other people in on the Zoom here. Do we have any question? Actually, I, I, I do have a, a, a couple of questions <clears throat> because I think um, in the conversation, especially from the standpoint of the financial, we talk about subsidies, but subsidize who? We're subsidizing the farmers to buy something, okay, that um, let's say otherwise would not be available. However, with the uh, with the chemical fertilizers, perhaps the thought should be changed that the chemical manufacturer or the chemical manufacturers of fertilizer, um, let's subsidize them to switch to the organic methods because it's just a matter of where does the money go. So what, what 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 would your thoughts be there, given the fact that if I understand it correctly, um, sixty four percent of uh, energy is created uh, by the burning of coal. So to me, that means there's tons of coal ash that's uh, ready and available for, uh, if you will, uh, let's say localized uh, farming and and uh, 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 agriculture and fertilizer. So how do we wrap our minds around that? Okay, well, we what? get the program started, like planetaryhealthproject.org, uh, which ex educates the people, it educates the farmer, and um, it gives you an opportunity to weigh in as a farmer. This is, and it's going to weigh in for their plight. We have to solve their plight, and we've done this, and we've created the platform for the dispersion point. And I'm just waiting on grants right now to get imports started. And uh, first of all, beginning with the Mississippi Basin, the Northern States, Iowa, I mean, it's, it's 4,000 square miles of farmland that needs helping. So you're talking a lot of fertilizer and how, how we will meet these demands. Mm. Um, that is the next question, how to meet that demand. And the state, the federal have to work together and they have to be on the side of the farmer. If they're not on the side of the farmer, it's not going to work. And I'm, I'm really hoping and praying that the right people get the right ear full that this change makes a good progress train change this is what we need to do now so what's going to happen mm -hmm. if one day we no longer have coal no longer have coal mm -hmm. um impossible. i don't think we that will ever happen no no <laughs> impossible it yeah doesn't it, mean, it means that what happened that if we don't have soil it's impossible 
So very he interesting. Helps. So yeah, but it's very interesting that these two are correlated and these two are constantly the battleground of what's going on in terms of energy and in terms of getting out of stuff. No, no. You know, carbon capture, we, we captured carbon from the atmosphere like uh, you use uh, your vacuum at home, you know. Mm. We, and then we bring this carbon to the underneath of the, the, uh, in, the in the earth and then be, uh, and convert this uh, carbon from atmosphere to the coal. So it is a logical cycle. <laughs> so, who's going to pay for this? Whisper. James? Who, who will pay for this? Mm. I would say instead of the tax dollars going to uh, mitigation projects which aren't solving things, uh, to go to our end, which is solving something. Create so, taxation benefits for the oil and gas companies, okay, to not make chemical fertilizers and to support the uh, or, organic uh, individuals who have access to things like coal ash and, and leaves and other things that are organic in nature. So instead mm -hmm. of, you know, be careful which way you're flipping the money around in the perspective of grants. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to give the last word to Dr. Calvati on this one. <laughs> what, what is your, what is your, your final word on or the, about the most important step going forward about this issue? And it's got to be quick. You know, just respect to the soil, respect to the humanity, respect to the climate, respect to whatever you have around yourself, and teach your, to teach your children to to really give this respect to the soil because soil is the mother earth and is the end and the last thing that we really need to do. thank you yeah absolutely james anything to add uh the quicker the better <laughs> i'm working hard you know to get it done and uh, me and ali have worked about what six seven years now together? seven years now yes. yeah so, and so this is already been... out and available right it is available. Uh, I am working on imports for the United States. Ali is got his uh, in Turkey. Yeah. Turkey, yes. We have uh, 4,000 tons in Turkey. Yeah. Of this, yes. And we test it in many plants and trees. Yeah. We got a very, very good feedback. Very good. Thank you for all of you to come on. Thank you so much for watching. Obviously, saving the soil is a huge issue something we would need to talk a lot more about, much more than all the other things. We hear about energy and climate change, but the most important part, soil, is completely neglected. So read up on it, watch it, and get back in touch with us. We'll see you next week. Have a good night.